Today is, a, is the beginning of a very, very special series that we're going to be doing with Dr. Carl Ball. Now, Dr. Ball is in the studio with us today, and we're going to be getting into some things that are absolutely astounding from the Word of God and from some things about creation, and, and it's just some things you really don't want to miss. Now, before we do anything else, let me tell you this. Don't miss this broadcast over the next two weeks because I can promise you that you will hear and see some things that have never been broadcast on television before, that have never been seen before by uh, anybody really except the scientific team that, that uncovered some... Uh, some, some things just a few days ago. I mean, just it took special shipment to, and hand carried some things in here that have never been publicly seen before. You're right. And so you don't want to miss this. I'm telling you right now, just settle it right now that you're going to tape it. We're going to make the whole series available to you on videotape, but you don't want to miss not one moment of any broadcast from today all over the next two weeks. Praise the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll get right in, into some really, really monumental things from the Spirit of God. Father, we praise you and thank you for this broadcast today. We thank you for what you are revealing by the Holy Spirit through your word. And we praise you and we thank you we ask you for a revelation from heaven to overflow our spirits and our minds. Amen. And we give you all the praise and the honor and the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are honored and privileged today to have Dr. Carl Ball, who is the founder and director of Creative Evidences Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. Now, Dr. Ball... Uh, in fact, I'm just going to let him tell you some things in a moment about himself. But I, there's a thing or two that I want to point out right now before we get any further into this. Um, the thing that really got my attention about Dr. Ball was the fact that in his scientific studies and so forth and down in Glen Rose, Texas. Glen Rose became famous a number of years ago because of some dinosaur tracks that were found down there in a little riverbed. And, and um, since then, there's been a whole lot of things done and said down there by a lot of different people. But Dr. Ball is unique in the fact and from the fact that instead of studying scientific theory and then try to make it match God's Word. Yes. He and a, and a very, very selected um, Holy Spirit anointed scientists around the country that, that he's in contact with, but, but especially Dr. Ball, they, he starts off with the Word of God as the absolute truth. And then goes to science and see, to see what part of that theory is the truth and what part of it misses because God's Word is the truth. And then, yes. and, and that, that'll straighten your theories out yes. for you. Dr. Ball, it's, it's it is a real honor and pleasure it's to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. In this place today. Praise the Lord. A moment ago, Brother Copeland, you said this is a new beginning. And I think you're right. Not only for this series of telecasts and broadcasts, but I wish... First of all, to commend you, I wish every single leader of every ministry in America and around the world would establish a new beginning to return to the scientific evidence confirming the Word of God as being literally true. But before that, we have to return to the Bible itself, for it is the absolute authority. Absolutely. We've given away the farm to academia. Uh, needlessly, we've actually permitted the evolutionary theory to control the minds and hearts and dispositions of an entire generation. Mm -hmm. A recent issue of Time magazine stated that the picture of America in this generation is depression. And there's a reason for that. We've left out the manual 
and the manual is the Word of God. Absolutely. When the Bible states, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, that is not only a, a religious uh, hope. Now, our hope is more than just a vain hope, a speculation. But that is an absolutely verifiable truth that we'll get into in some of these telecasts and broadcasts. And I want to commend you for having a creation speaker as a guest. I wish every ministry around the world would have a new beginning to recognize that there are creation speakers out there that believe the Bible is the Word of God mm -hmm. and have an academic background that can verify that the Scripture is literally true. Well, let me state that another way. The Scripture verifies the academic research. The Bible is the absolute manual. There's evidence that God did it exactly like He said He did it. For instance, in one of the telecasts, we'll be showing uh, your listening audience some actual photos of Noah's Ark that our team just Praise recently God. declassified. Well, I've got some questions I want to ask you about All that right. about that ark when it comes time to get to it because um, some things that um, that I in in my study of what happened during the flood and and so forth. And I don't want to get over onto it now because we want to get there progressively, but I I. I know that that water was over 30,000 feet deep because it covered the highest hill on earth. Oh, yes. Yes. And so it would have to be that deep to cover the highest oh, yes. hill on earth. Yes. And when God said it covered the highest hill on earth, that wasn't some figure of speech. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's literal. It, what he said, he said. I mean, right. God knows. And God's well, word is he true. He knows how high the highest hill on oh, earth yes. is. I mean, uh, <laughs> He so he didn't dimensions. use. He didn't have to have some metaphor to to make himself no. plain, and that's made me wonder a lot of times about that ark because in the Hebrew, when it says it says that they went in the ark, but it said God closed them in there. Oh yes, and it said He closed them in round about. Well, uh, having an aviation background before I got saved, I was flying for a living. That's what I was doing when I accepted the Lord. Well, that immediately caught my, my attention. I thought, wait a minute, he closed them in round about. That sounds like a pressure capsule. And then I got thinking, they're 30,000 feet high while they were floating around <laughs> in that thing. I, I, and I didn't know, I don't know enough about the scientific side of, of um, of it to to know whether the oh. what happened to the atmosphere when that water got deeper, All but right. you know in praying about this now, the la just the last couple of days I was thinking about this again. Since the atmosphere before that flood. The yes. only thing human beings had ever been subjected to was many times more dense than our sea level atmosphere is right now. You've hit upon a real secret, a very that important secret. Even though, well, if, if a man, if, if Noah was here today, he would have the physical effect on his body at sea level that you and I would have if we were at uh, yes, 25,000 feet or so without any oxygen. You're exactly right. Decompression situation. Yeah, because he's, he was, he's never exposed to this thin atmosphere that you and I, uh, our bodies have become acclimated to. Yeah, at least not by transference of one situation, one compartment to another. Uh, you've hit upon something very important. Let's tease the audience a little bit. Uh, every, don't miss a single telecast because we're going to share some <laughs> things that have not been discussed on oh, television and radio God. before. Mm. And uh, the atmosphere before Noah's flood was different. And I'll be showing your audience why it was different and to what degree it was different. Oh, I can hardly wait because I want to tell you something. I, my first introduction to this man, I, somebody gave me some videotapes of a lecture he was doing. And I, I had gone to bed that night and I was, I, I was not sleepy at all. And I was lying there and had a hard time going to sleep. And, 
And it was about 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. And I'm thinking, I thought, well, I, I don't know what those videos are, but I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to pop one of those things in. I, I knew of him, but I, I, had, I had never uh, seen a, a lecture or anything or heard him speak. So I went over and got one of those videos and I stuck it in there. Don't ever do that. Not if you intend to ever sleep for that. <laughs> at five o'clock the following morning, I was on the, I was into the, uh, the about the fourth or fifth session. I, and, and by the end of that one, I mean, it's all I could do to keep him standing up in the bed. I, I, I was up around, running around the room. That's what your it wife just, told me. Oh, <laughs> You stayed up all night to watch the, yeah, that I video series. Yeah, I watched that whole series that night. I didn't sleep at all, man. And I didn't sleep. It was hard to sleep for the next two days <laughs> because I couldn't get it out of my mind. Brother Copeland, in our work, we have over 50 credible scientists and engineers, educators, involved in the research. And for the first time in history, we have the entire creation model formulated, consistent with the Word of God. And once you get into it, and we'll be discussing that model in some of these telecasts, once you get into it, there's no place to stop. No. Sleep just evades you. <laughs> now, I'm sorry I cost you a night's sleep. No, you didn't cost me anything. I invested that night's All sleep right. because it, it changed my life. Right. It changed my entire life. Um, you know, let me interject something. It is true that once we get the issue settled, the issue that we were designed and created, it does change our lives. It changes our moral response to the situation. It changes our respect for the Word of God and obedience to the Word of God. It changes our mindset, how we view politics, how we view life itself, but especially how we view accountability. There is a personal God. Once we realize there's a personal God. Can I, can I tell you a story? Sure. Is this a good time? Yeah. Uh, recently, I walked past my desk. Now, as you know, the Creation Evidences Museum is still in temporary facilities. And we're trusting God to provide those professional permanent facilities consistent with the research. The research is first class. It's academic. It's consistent with the Word of God. But we do not yet have our permanent facilities. So I walked past my desk that was piled high, and a fax had come across the machine, a handwritten fax. I picked it up and glanced at it. I've learned, when I read a letter, I've learned to read the signature first. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to know who's talking while I'm reading the thing. So I glanced at the signature, and it said, Doctor, Doctor, handwritten, Doctor, Doctor, David Otway Ray, W-R-A-Y. And I thought to myself, I've never seen that name spelled like that. So again, I looked at it, Dr. Dr. David Otway Ray, parentheses, Senior Academician, parentheses closed, USSR, Academy of Sciences. Mm -hmm. Then I glanced at the next four lines, and he listed four other academies of science in the Eastern Bloc countries where he was a member. So I thought, I better read this letter. I glanced up at the top, and he began, Dear Dr. Ball, this is the most important letter I have ever written in all my life. I thought, I really had better read this letter. He said, I just saw you on satellite television giving the creation model. And he said, I can prove scientifically that the model works. Please contact me. I'm lecturing in the Department of Physics as a guest lecturer at a major university, and he listed that university and a private telephone number. Well, you and I both, through the years, have received letters we were not absolutely sure uh, were genuine, and I didn't want to embarrass myself and whoever might be on the other end of that phone line. It took me three days to make the call. I finally placed the call, and at the other end, uh, a voice with broken but correct English said hello and gave the name of the residence. And I said, I'm calling for Dr. David Otway Ray. And he said, this is Dr. Ray. I said, I'm Carl Ball, creation. He said, Dr. Ball, I've been waiting three days for you to call. <laughs> well, I was a little embarrassed. Uh, he said, I saw you on satellite television. 
he said, let me give you my story. He said, I began as an atheist. And he said, I was sure there was no God. And he said, my discipline, he said, I have two doctorates in this discipline. It's a very specialized discipline. He said, my discipline is quantum algebra. And he said, there's only a handful of scholars in the world who are proficient in this discipline. And most of them are in the Eastern Bloc countries. And he said, we've developed this discipline to the point where essentially we can prove or disprove any theorem. And he said, I took on the task, the ultimate task of once and for all scientifically proving there's no need for a God in the universe. Hmm. Mm. I said, what did you do? He said, I reduced the concept to a formula. And then he said, I worked out the formula. It took me eight pages to work out the formula. And he said, I took the formula and the technical display of that in the eight pages to my colleagues at the Academy of Sciences. And I said, check this out. They kept it a few days and came back to me and said, uh, uh, we can't find anything wrong with it. We just don't like the conclusion. Rework it. He said, I took it back. I tried to change the formula, but he said, Dr. Ball, there was no way I could because this is a rigid scientific discipline. And he said, I was correct with the formula. Then I tried to change the eight pages, but I couldn't change one iota in the eight pages. So he said, I took it back to my colleagues and said, I tried to change it. You change it. They said, we've already tried. We can't. And they said, we can't find a flaw in the science. We just don't like the conclusion. I said, Dr. Ray, what was the conclusion? He said, my conclusion was that the universe is young. He said, as I worked this formula forward and backward, I recognized that the further back I went in the data, the more refined the universe became. In other words, the second law of thermodynamics, the law of entropy, deterioration, which is consistent with mm -hmm. the Word of God. Everything's mm -hmm. waxing old like a garment. He said that second law of thermodynamics was in effect, entropy. And he said the further I went back, the more refined the universe became until I reached a point of absolute perfection. And he said, I recognized that the universe had to be designed, had to be created, and was created recently. I said, how recently? Now this is what will throw you. He said, I found from these impeccable mathematic calculations, the closest I could get the universe in its perfection was 6,000 years but the farthest back I could get was 10,000 years. He said the parameters would not move either way. It is no more recent than 6,000 years, but no older than 10,000 years. He said, I recognize then that if the universe was more refined in the past and within those parameters was at a state of absolute perfection, I realized the universe had to be designed and created. I said, what did you do then, Dr. Ray? He said, I realized I needed to know that creator. I Isn't said, that so? something else. Yeah. And I said, well, what did you do then? He said, in my background, I had already studied all of the ancient scriptures of the Eastern religions. I ruled them out. They are not defendable scientifically. I said, he said, there's only one religious book that is academically defendable. I said, what is it? He said, it's the Holy Bible. I said, what'd you do then? He said, I read it. He said, I read it all. I said, what'd you find? He said, I found that I could know this creator, but there was only one way to know him. Now here is a member, senior academician, Academy of Sciences, USSR, who began this search as an atheist. And he said, I found there's only one way to know him, and that's through his son, Jesus Christ. Well, he said, know, I'm a born-again believer. You know, that's, that's always been the problem with scientific research is 
If we go any further with this, we're going to meet God and we don't want to have anything to do with him. We want to think however we want to yes. think. Well, the preachers have done the same thing. Oh, yes. The, yes. The, they've got, well, now we don't want to translate that like that because if we do, we'll fall into the hands of that denomination over there and they may be right and we don't want to know that. So We want truth. And we if you truth. come to God's Word as final authority and start there, you start out where most people would like to wind yes. up. I mean, you start with the answer instead of just the problem. Amen.